So it is also known as spontaneous esophageal perforation. What is the most common site? It is lower one third of esophagus along left posterior lateral direction. So most common site is lower one third. It is the lower third of esophagus where exactly along left posterior lateral direction. So this is left posterior lateral direction and we discussed in which patients it is going to occur it is going to occur in the patients who are having forceful vomiting repeated vomiting and vomiting occurs against closed gratis because of that what will happen there will be very high pressure in the esophagus you can see here whenever vomiting again occurs against closed glottis so there is very high pressure in the esophagus so what happens esophagus it is going to perforate along the weakest part and that is lower one third along left posterior lateral direction so whatever the vomitus which was supposed to come out now that vomitus enters into the mediastinum and because of that patient develops severe mediastinitis and because of this severe mediastinitis what's the problem there is thoracic pain there is vomiting and there is cervical subcutaneous emphysema so tell me what is the name of this triad frequently asked question this is macular triad so borhaf syndrome it is characterized by macular triad what are the components thoracic pain vomiting and there is cervical subcutaneous emphysema clear imagine the patients who are having massive contamination so if there is massive contamination or if there is massive inflammation these patients are also going to develop fever and sepsis so what happens some of the patients are going to develop fever and sepsis so fever and sepsis it is going to occur in which patients the patients in whom there is massive contamination or massive inflammation so if there is massive contamination massive contamination or massive inflammation then there is fever suppose we are going to perform chest x-ray what's the finding so you are going to find hydronemothorax on chest x-ray and what is the investigation of choice for diagnosis obviously we are going for esophagogram not the barium which one is preferred it is the water soluble esophagogram which is the investigation of choice so at the place of barium we are going to prefer water soluble contrast and what's that contrast used gastrographin so how we make the diagnosis here you can see diagnosis suppose we go for chest x-ray what's the finding we discussed on chest x-ray in these patient there is hydronemothorax on chest x-ray there is hydronemothorax hydronemothorax clear on chest x-ray right and investigation of choice for diagnosis that's important question it was asked many times investigation of choice for diagnosis for Borhaf syndrome it is water soluble contrast esophagogram so here we use water soluble contrast so name is water soluble contrast esophagogram clear so this is water soluble contrast esophagogram and we discussed what is that water soluble contrast used gastrographin we are using which contrast we are using gastrographin gastrographin clear now the problem since in this patient there is full thickness perforation obviously we have to go for surgery now surgery or the type of treatment it depends on the time of presentation if patient comes within 24 hours this is the golden period of repair and here mortality is much lesser but if patient comes after 24 hours what happens in those cases mortality can be more than 50 percent so in patients of esophageal perforation management depends on the time of presentation what is the golden period of repair if patient comes within 24 hours so if patient comes within 24 hours this is the golden period of repair this is the golden period of repair clear if patient comes within 24 hours okay now what we do since there is perforation so we have to perform the repair of perforation since there is contamination in the thorax so we have to go for icd insertion and for adequate nutrition we have to go for feeding jejunostomy so here what we are going to perform first repair of perforation repair of perforation clear since there is contamination so for that we have to insert icd intercostal drain or chest tube insertion so what we go for icd insertion and for nutrition 
since you perform the repair so for nutrition we go for feeding jejunostomy so for the nutrition we go for feeding jejunostomy clear but what after 24 hours it's difficult to perform the repair because esophagus is not having serosa so it's very difficult for esophagus to hold the sutures because after 24 hours what happens those margins of perforation are very friable so rather than going for repair what we do rather than going for repair we perform esophagostomy rest of the things are same so what we perform we perform esophagostomy plus icd insertion so esophagostomy plus icd insertion plus feeding jejunostomy so here also we go for icd insertion plus feeding jejunostomy clear feeding jejunostomy so why it is considered as golden period of repair if patient comes within 24 hours why because here if patient is brought within 24 hours mortality it is up to 20 percent how much is the mortality it is up to 20 percent and if patient is brought after 24 hours how much is the mortality it is more than 50 percent clear so this is how we manage the patients of esophageal perforation and this is all about esophagus